Is your NEET preparation on track? Pace ahead with NEET Test Prep app by Extra Marks. Adaptive Testing Platform. India's Top Faculty. Micro Scheduling. Live and Recorded Sessions. Doubt Solving Sessions. National Level Weekly Test. Analytics and Reports. Download the app now. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kavita Tiwani Joshi and I welcome you all on Extra Marks online portal. Let me tell you, I am going to teach you the chapter from the subject Zoology. Okay, and the chapter's name is Neural Control and Coordination. We are going to pick a topic of this particular chapter and that topic would be Generation of Nerve Impulse. So here we go, we have to talk about this neural control and coordination chapter and the topic which we are going to choose today is generation of nerve impulse, okay? So my dear students, I know that you know this topic from 11th standard, uh, always, uh, always, always students find difficulty in it, in understanding it. The reason, the concept behind it is always uh, not much clear to them but don't worry at all because we are going to talk about it in detail and now onwards from from today onwards you won't be facing any difficulty while solving questions related to this particular topic okay so now let me take you people to the concepts and module which we are going to cover introduction we would be covering generation of nerve impulse we would be covering and then there would be a quick quick recap which will be uh, we will be doing right so now uh, first of all you have to understand some basic things about you know nervous system neural system because obviously this topic is uh, is a is a major topic subtopic of of this particular chapter that is neural control and coordination so uh, for maintaining homeostasis for maintaining homeostasis, now when we talk about homeostasis means maintenance of constant internal environment. Okay, the functions of all organ systems of our body are coordinated with the help of nervous system only. So I hope you people know that nervous system is the system which controls all other systems of the body and without nervous system we cannot be you know, we won't be able to do anything. Our all systems won't be working properly without the assistance of nervous system or neural system. So in general, when I uh, tell you people about human neural system, so you divide it into uh, two major systems. That is central nervous system. You can also call it as CNS, okay, and peripheral nervous system, and you can also call it as PNS in short, right? So you should know all these short forms also. The reason uh, is, uh, you know, sometimes the questions appear uh, from these uh, or, or on the basis of these short forms. Now, central nervous system comprises of brain and spinal cord, and peripheral nervous system it comprises of nerves, nerves which are distributed in the body means the nerves which are arising from the cranium called as cranial nerves the nerves which are arising from your spinal cord so those nerves which are arising from the spinal cord are called as spinal nerves so the major the major portion that is brain and spinal cord they are uh, constituted under central nervous system and all the nerves are constituted under peripheral nervous system but then when i talk about pns and we try to divide it so we see that it is divided subdivided into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system now whenever you see this term soma or somatic it always always relevant with body it always means body so uh, somatic nervous system autonomic nervous system these are the two uh, nervous systems into which peripheral nervous system is divided into. Now, they give output to skeletal muscles and autonomic nervous system which you can call in short as ANS. I hope you people must have heard about it. So, it gives output to smooth muscles and glands. Okay. So, these are voluntary. This is voluntary. It is involuntary. Voluntary means which is under the uh, under one's own control and involuntary means which is not under control. And input is coming from sensory organs. I hope everybody knows your sensory organs, your eyes, your ears, nose. And input from internal receptors uh, in case of 
ANS uh, if we talk about it. So now again ANS is subdivided into two major categories sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. Now uh, if you talk about sympathetic so flight or fight responses means uh, they are adrenergic they release adrenaline uh, adrenaline hormone if I talk about its fibers and you know what uh, when we talk about sympathetic nervous system, so it helps in tolerating all the abnormal conditions of your, of your body like, like uh, rise in heartbeat, like increase in breathing rate, respiratory rate. All these you people are able to tolerate with the help of sympathetic nervous system and all the things, you know, all the relaxing responses, uh, they are brought about by parasympathetic nervous system means you can you know in simple language i can just tell you that it helps to bring the things back to normal it helps to bring the things back to normal okay i hope that is understood to you so now the major topic which we have to actually discuss is nerve impulse is nerve impulse and nerve impulse generation nerve impulse generation now for understanding this you have to understand that this is a neuron as we all know right listen to me very carefully so you know uh, with the help of this we will be able to talk about it mm, in a back, better way easy way now you see obviously everybody knows you know exon exon terminals uh, or, or you can also call them as nerve endings right so here as you can see that this is your neuron okay this is neuron right yes ma'am okay this is neuron and this is exon uh, which is a part of neuron only so structure of neuron i have made in front of you people and this whole portion is called as exon now what am i going to do is this you know uh, if i make it like this so I'm saying that this is uh, your exon which I which was longitudinal and I have turned it like this. I have turned it like this means horizontal I have uh, put it like that. And if now here from here if I uh, am going to continue so here I can draw this in this way. Means ma'am this is exon which you are trying to draw. Exactly correct. You are right. And okay this much we can draw it like this right. So this is exon. So if you people know that the membrane of exon can be called as exolemma. Exolemma or exolemma. You can call it like that. So if you want me to write. So yes, here I can write it for you. This is exolemma or exolemma. And uh, you know the, the cytoplasm which is there inside exolemma. You can call it exoplasm. You can call it exo plasm like cytoplasm this term is there which uh, can be called as exo exoplasm okay got my point great now listen to me we have to also talk about certain channels we have to talk about certain channels now channels can be of two types how many types how many types channels are of two types one can be open one can be open or leaky channels open or leaky channels another can be closed closed or gated channels closed or gated channels okay now you need to understand this uh, certain channels are always open always open means they are never closed like like uh, uh, like you will be finding Na plus channels, K plus channels uh, and rather than Na plus here you will, you will be finding K plus channels which remain always open. But there are certain doors which are closed and they only open uh, via the entry of some stimulus. Okay. For example, your mother is working alone at your home, right? And she and there is nobody else at home and uh, the, the doorbell rings and when she sees from the kitchen window she sees she found a she finds a stranger and she doesn't open the door because obviously that is not not that is not safe right so that door is closed right now and it will only be open uh, it will on, uh, only open when the particular members like here in this case your mother wants to open it now after some time the bell uh, the doorbell again rings and uh, you know there is some neighbor uh, of yours there is one neighbor auntie of yours and you know she's uh, she wants to get in and wants to talk uh, to your mother auntie and 
uh, you know want to have some gupshap and all so now mother sees uh, uh, her finds her fr from the kitchen window and now she'll be like okay yes now i can open the door because i know this particular person she is not a stranger for us so these gates which are not open always but they are closed and they are only getting opened you know uh, via entry of somebody so in in this case this these channels these closed channels these gated channels will be open only when some stimulus will enter now ma'am what is stimulus this must be coming into your minds right now stimulus is the singular form and if i talk about its plural form so you can call uh, them means more than one as stimuli so you can give this term stimuli right now now uh, nerve impulse generation takes place in three major steps first of all you have to learn those steps come on learn with me first step is polarization polarization second step would be depolarization depolarization and the final step will be repolarization polarization depolarization and repolarization so this sequence you should know you cannot change the sequence and first of all i am going to tell you people about the very first step now now from here you have to pay a lot of attention reason you'll be finding a lot of quest questions on this particular you know portion in this chapter neural control and coordination and they mold the questions a lot if the concept is clear to you people so you will never be stuck with any question and you will, you will be easily you know able to solve them but then if the if you are trying to mug the things up and uh, uh, trying to do the ratification and uh, then you the molded questions you know you won't be able to attempt them correctly so i hope you are understanding that and you are listening to me very carefully right so first step is polarization now we have to understand that right now the membrane is in resting state with state resting state now the uh, right now the membrane is preparing itself to receive the stimulus to receive the stimulus okay now if you see that here outside this uh, exo exon uh, we have ecf ecf means what extracellular fluid which contains many ions like like na plus like uh, k plus like cl minus all these ions are present outside and along with this negatively charged proteins are also present outside which proteins which proteins negatively charged proteins are also present and in fact these proteins are also present inside means in exoplasm okay so negatively charged charged proteins are present inside as well okay ma'am now listen very carefully when we talk about uh, when we talk about this membrane exolema the first point says the very first point says what the very first point says that this membrane is impermeable to na plus and negatively charged proteins so yes here i can write for you membrane is is impermeable now impermeable means inability to pass through inability to pass through is is impermeable to na plus uh, is impermeable to na plus ions and negatively charged proteins negatively charged proteins so now you want to say that they will, this membrane will not allow either na plus to enter or go out absolutely correct which is there in extracellular fluid in high concentration it will not allow na plus ions to get in and it will also not allow uh, you know negatively charged protein either to come in or to go out either to come in or to go out okay now now see uh, when we talk about this uh, you know uh, second point so this membrane is slightly permeable this membrane is slightly permeable slightly permeable to k plus ions slightly permeable permeable to k plus ions so ma'am that means it will allow some k plus ions to get in absolutely correct so now you can see these k plus ions they are coming in they are getting in but but the most important point 
uh, which has to be you know uh, remembered is here negatively okay let's choose some another color hmm okay this one we can choose so these negatively charged proteins they dominate inside and this these na plus ions these na plus ions they dominate outside they dominate outside means they are present in more more number they are present in higher concentration and that means as compared to other ions and here negatively charged proteins inside they are uh, present in higher concentration as compared to the k plus ions so that's how that's how the charge which gets developed outside due to more concentration of na plus ions is positive charge which charge positive charge and inside negative charge develops so inside negative charge and outside positive charge develops this way okay now we say we can say that you know a resting membrane potential is equal to resting membrane potential potential everybody knows about potential difference we talk about charges okay so outside more positive charges are there and inside uh, comparatively uh, you know uh, negative charges are there so you need to understand here one more thing uh, i am writing over here so is the, if this is your membrane and you know outside you are having outside you are having positive charge and inside also you are having positive charge will it be called called as polarized membrane no it it would not be considered as polarized and if 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 you know there are negative charges uh, on both sides means outside also inside also then also it would not be considered to be as polarized okay so ma'am when we will be calling uh, it as polarized so yes when we will be calling it let me tell you people when when there are opposite charges outside and inside means either positive or negative or or vice versa also you can say so the, at that time you can say that you know this membrane is considered to be as polarized so here now you can see outside there is positive charge inside there is negative charge so yes uh, we can call this membrane as polarized right now it is preparing itself to receive the stimulus and the potential at which uh you know all this happens is considered to be minus 70 millivolt and you have to remember that you know minus means what uh the inside charges are considered to be negative the inside charges are considered to be negative charges okay now uh, the exciting cells like like um, you know nerve cells muscle cells they can even uh, they can even be polarized at approximately minus 55 to minus 60 volt and yes there is a range to uh, this resting membrane potential also minus 42 minus 90 millivolt but you have to remember that uh, you know this value minus 70 millivolt you have to remember this as as the most important i can tell you right so now let's move on and um, let's see that you know the second step what is our second step okay now here you know uh, now the stimulus is going to enter obviously so accordingly we will be uh, talking about the things so this is your second step going to be the second step is the second step is depolarization depolarization and now it says that you know from resting state from resting state it is going to come in excited state so basically it will be coming in excited state now after the receival of the stimulus after the receival of the stimulus but before than that you have to understand that here we have channels now if you people remember i taught you about channels na plus gated channels and a plus gated channels these are called as and these are closed channels gated channels if you people remember the membrane was slightly permeable to k plus ions means there were open or leaky channels which were al allowing k plus to get in right in the very first step but now here the stimulus is coming right just look at this so this stimulus is uh, coming from here so let's label it as stimulus okay and now now what will happen these na plus gated channels will open these na plus gated channels will open 
and a lot of Na plus ions will get in and a lot of lot of Na plus ions will get in already there were so many k plus ions so now both of them together will dominate now na plus and k plus ions both of them together they will dominate they will dominate means ma'am you want to say that there will be development of positive charge inside now yes you are absolutely correct so inside there is going to be positive charge okay my dear children and outside there will be <clears throat> there will be negative charge so now the very first step which has been happened over here occurred over here is called as influx of influx means inflow whenever you see this term flux <clears throat> so it means flow influx of na plus ions influx of na plus ions okay inflow a lot of na plus ions have uh, you know got entered into it and here we have also seen one more thing reversal of polarity reversal of polarity reversal of polarity means earlier there were positive charges outside and negative charges inside and now it is just opposite means negative charges outside and inside positive charges okay secondly here action potential action potential okay or action potential or nerve impulse generated action potential or nerve impulse is generated yes this is the very step where this nerve impulse generates due to the entry of stimulus uh, you know uh, when i uh, tried to talk about stimulus i didn't tell you people uh, we can write over here any change any change in external or internal environment any change in external in external or or internal or internal environment can be called as stimulus can be called as stimulus any change means something hot uh, you know any hot object is getting touched to your skin or or any change you know temperature change ph change um uh, your your digestive juices are not getting secreted properly in your body that is also a change but that is a kind of internal change then so all these kind of changes you know uh they can be considered to be as stimuli okay so action potential or nerve impulse is generated now the membrane has been reached to the excited state after the receival of the stimulus and it happens at approximately plus 30 millivolt plus 30 millivolt means the inside charges are considered to be as positive charges inside charges are considered to be as positive charges so i hope all the events which take place in uh, depolarization step i hope those steps are clear to you those events are clear to you right so let me write over here that here you have positive and negative right now let's let's get on to the third and final step third and final step but for that we have to also draw the ion channels now these are going to be called as again gated channels but uh, which kind of gated channels you can call them as k plus gated channels okay so let's choose this another color to 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 mark them right yes a now k plus k plus gated channels these are k plus gated gated channels yes or no now let me tell you people let me tell you people that yes this is the complete uh, diagram of this and the very third step is called as the repolarization repolarization okay so yes here we can write repolarization polarization okay my dear children hmm so now what's going to happen ma'am 
now this membrane will come back will come back from excited to excited to normal state why why it is uh, it has to come from excited to normal state can you people tell me yes the reason is obviously new stimuli are going to come together uh, after after this whole process and new nerve impulse has to be generated so first this this process has to be ended now it has to come back to the normal state resting state whatever you want to call it ma'am that means again the same process will happen after repolarization and a new stimulus would be coming in and a new nerve impulse would be generated absolutely correct okay so now how it is going to happen listen now these k plus gated channels will open any plus gated channels uh, uh, were there earlier and now k plus gated channels will open and you know what now k plus ions will go out there will be outflux of k plus ions yes there will be outflux of k plus ions and this is the very first and important event of repolarization and that is called as outflux of k plus ions outflux of k plus ions got my point or no so now what will happen ma'am again we have to bring the same situation means resting state back so for that uh, ma'am outside there should be positive charge and inside there should be negative charge absolutely correct you are so uh, now because because k plus ions have gone out so outside they will dominate k plus ions will be in higher concentration so that's how there will be positive charge developed outside but then inside if you people remember if you have forgotten let me tell you people we had negatively charged proteins na hai na we had negatively charged proteins now here they will dominate negatively charged proteins will dominate here again okay and there will be negative charge inside okay so now let me directly write uh, the the charges now again we have got positive charges outside right like this and negative charges inside and negative charges inside right so ma'am yes we have got the whole condition back but there is one uh, you know uh, still one issue and that issue is earlier in case of very first step in polarization there were more na plus ions outside there were more na plus ions outside and they were dominating and in case of this repolarization k plus ions are more outside and that uh, you know that thing is not uh, is not uh, correct till now and that has to be corrected and yes you are absolutely correct because you know for correcting that we need to have a pump we need to have a pump and that pump is called as that pump is called as na plus active active first of all you have to write active for sure reason i'll be telling you don't worry okay active na plus active na plus k plus pump active na plus k plus pump okay now listen to me very carefully what this pump is going to do what this pump is going to do okay that we have to understand so at a time it will throw three na plus ions outside and two k plus ions inside two k plus ions inside and that's how two k plus ions inside and that's how you know there will be more na plus ions outside and uh, k plus ions in, uh, com compared to that na plus will be lesser and the old condition the the original condition from where we started will be achieved again there will be more na plus ions outside and there will be lesser k plus ions comparatively inside so that's uh, you know while doing that it has a expenditure it has an expenditure of approximately 1 atp 1 atp it has an expenditure of approximately 1 atp that is a source of energy and that's how we call it as active sodium potassium pump which throws at a time 3 na plus ions outside and 2 k plus ions inside this whole page which i have explained since so long you know it is going to help you 
with all your questions and now again a new stimulus stimulus will appear and again a new nerve impulse would be generated and now you have to understand these are all the events which can be asked to you people uh, in the questions and accordingly you have to answer like they can ask you in which uh, step outflux of k plus ions take place so you have to write repolarization they can ask you in which uh, step there is negative charge outside and uh, positive charge inside so you have to answer depolarization so yes the major three steps are polarization depolarization repolarization okay let's move ahead yaar resting potential now whatever i have taught you you know all the points will be written properly uh, which you can find over here so it is the potential difference between inside and outside of the plasma membrane of exon plasma membrane of exon nothing else your exolemma only when it is at at rest a neuron is at rest when it is not conducting any nerve impulse it is just preparing itself and the average value is minus 70 millivolt we know that at this state the ecf extracellular fluid is positively charged and in comparison to the contents that are inside of the plasma membrane i told you na na plus ions uh, were more outside and plasma membrane with a potential difference means maybe positive charge outside and negative charge inside or opposite you can uh, here you are uh, considering outside positive and inside negative and that's how you are calling it as po polarized now channels they can be of you know i told you gated channels na k plus na plus k plus pump so maintains distribution of k plus ions and and Na plus which operate at resting neuron. I told you uh, this. Okay, because you know that resting state would be again achieved when this Na plus K plus pump would be working. Now you can be asked questions like, what will happen if Na plus K plus pump doesn't work properly? So the answer would be uh, that you know the polarity will not be uh, able to get maintained and uh, there will be more Na plus plus ions inside inside the exon. Okay, gated channels in resting cell. Uh, remain in a closed state and operate due to changes pressure voltage changes okay a nerve impulse is generated when the resting potential is disturbed due to any stimulus like it can be electric shock heat pressure touch pain chemicals smell taste change in ph light sound stimulus can be any kind of change i told you people that it can be any kind of change means as you are able to see so many so many examples even sound also light also these if if a flash of light you know very bright flash of light is coming onto my eyes i do it i do like this please 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 uh, low it down so or or a lo loud noise is coming to my ear so i'm like this please please just low the you know uh lower down the volume because uh, that is a change which my ears are not able to bear right so all these can be uh, called as changes now it consists of two phases depolarization in which polarity will be reversed and an action potential or nerve impulse will be generated and repolarization return of the neuronal membrane to its resting potential depolarization stimulus comes and there is influx of na plus ions you can see over here these are na plus ions these are channels gated voltage gated channels also you can call them right and now these na plus plus ions are coming inside did you see that did you see that come on have a look this these na plus ions got inside like this okay and you know entry of na plus ions lowers down the potential difference the electrical charge triggers opening of na plus gated channels see now they are open earlier it was closed did you see that it was closed like this now it is open now is it fine now more na plus ions will rush inside the neuron with the help of these gated channels you can see how they are coming in come on see that yes they are coming in one by one so na plus ions inflow influx is happening okay and now if i tell you people the k plus ion gated channels are closed right now in this step they are closed right now but this is how you know there was influx of na plus ions when the stimulus came yes so they rush inside the neuron 
And when I talk about uh, uh, now these entry of Na plus ions, they lead to reversal of polarity. Earlier it was like this outside positive and inside negative. Now it becomes like this outside negative, inside positive. This is called as depolarization. It approximately lasts for one millisecond. And now these gated channels will be closed for Na plus. These gated channels uh, will be closed for Na plus. Now, when a stimulus of adequate strength, optimum strength, which you can call it, call as threshold stimulus is applied. So, it, it ranges from minus 70 to 0 millivolt to plus 40 millivolt. I told you people now uh, that uh, the range is when the, when the action potential or resting membrane potential I am talking about. So, you can call that range as minus 40 to minus 90 and uh, any stimulus which is of some minimum strength. Are you understanding? Adequate strength, minimum strength it is it must be of. So, that stimulus is called as threshold stimulus. Okay. So, as you can see this graph, uh, you can see that how impulse is getting the, the graph, how it goes. Are you people able to see this? how graph you know is going and what each and every curve is representing i will be telling you that also so yes a uh, threshold stimulus is the minimum strength stimulus which is required to produce a nerve impulse summation is additive effect where all the sub threshold stimuli uh, in rapid succession means one after the other produce a combined response and all are non principal means uh, a sub threshold, sub threshold, threshold means uh, even lower that minimum uh, than that minimum value. For example, I consider a minimum value of 10. So if the stimulus is having a strength of lower than that means even 9, so a nerve impulse won't be able to get generated. But yes, uh, if 10 or above that, so it can even lead to the maximum response. So a sub threshold uh, stimulus will never induce response because that is not enough, right? And if above than that or, or that 10 value is uh, given to us or is uh, uh, it is available with that minimum strength, that means uh, threshold stimulus, then a nerve impulse would be able to get generated. Permeability of depolarized membrane to Na, Na plus ions rapidly drops. And now the voltage gated K plus ion channels are going to open. Now there will be outflux moving out of K plus ions. As I told you people, yes, see them how they are moving out. These purple colored gated channels are K plus gated channels. And the K plus ions are going out one by one. Do you want, do you want to see it again? Yes, you can see it again. So why are these purple colored gated channels one by one, one by one, the K plus ions are going out and you know this whole process is called as uh, outflux of K plus ions, outflow of K plus ions. The membrane now returns back to the same configuration, outside positive charges, inside negative charges. Okay, now this was the third step that is repolarization. So, these are the steps. Resting potential, yes. Then Na plus leakage happened. Okay. So, let it be. Let, let the uh, flow chart get completed and then we will be, you know, because we are not able to uh, follow this right now. Yes. Now, it's done. Uh, and let me uh, explain this. Resting potential was the first step. Now, Na plus uh, ions leaked into the neuron by the opening of voltage, voltage gated Na plus channels open. Okay, and then Na plus ions got entered into the neuron. Now, second step would be depolarization. Resting potential means we are talking about first step over here. Polarization. This is your first step. And depolarization is your second step. Now, Na plus gated channels will close. And you know, uh, K plus gated channels will open. K plus gated channels will open. Now K plus ions will move out. Our outflux of K plus ions will happen. And the final step would be called as repolarization. And then there would be a refractory period. Now, if I talk about refractory period, um, you can say coming back from excited state to normal state, resting potential again. And again, the same cycle will happen. These are the cyclic events during generation of Nerve impulse, the minimum intensity of stimulus that will be required to produce an action potential is called. Options are action stimulus, threshold stimulus or depolarization. Obviously, 
very obvious answer we all know if we have heard the session properly threshold stimulus it is the level to which the membrane potential must reach in order to initiate begin an action potential minus 40 to minus 55 millivolt minimum value okay it is dependent on different different factors although but then uh, yes uh, minimum strength should be there on reaching the threshold stimulus there is influx of sodium and again the same process will go on and lead to excited state what is this what is this ma'am can you can you explain in unmyelinated uh, in unmyelinated neurons unmyelinated exons means uh, you know where myelin sheath is absent you can also call them non myelinated how impulse transmission takes place how impulse transmission takes place very easy for example um, this is the first part right uh, from where and this is the second and this is the third if you are able to see this um, and uh, you know from positive to negative charges the impulses are going to travel from one region to another region you can see here also and then you can see here also are you people able to see this arrow from positive to negative from positive to negative uh, they are going to follow and do you people know when outside charge is negative and inside is positive so this is the excited state this this bluish uh, colored you know background showing outside negative and inside positive this is depolarized region here it is written now see and 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 the uh, you know before this the region is uh, considered to be ex, uh, this in resting state now how the impulses are getting transmitted uh, from positive to negative charges come on have a look at this animation yes and the direction of propagation the direction of impulse we could also be showing can you people see these blinking arrows yes so now positive to negative positive to negative the direction would be accordingly the from the uh, you know uh, excited state to negative uh, to uh, resting state here you can see this again you want to see you can see just a second uh, okay so yes positive to negative inside the nerve impulse uh, are going from is going from positive to negative okay uh, if you see over here from positive to negative that's how it has shown this arrow okay so uh, you know this is how the uh, the nerve impulses they get transmitted in case of unmyelinated neurons ma'am what about uh, myelinated okay so in myelinated if uh, you want to understand that so you have to go through this diagram with me you have to go through this diagram with me so here we have nodes of renvier where the ion channels are exposed where the ion channels these are ion channels okay and we have myelin sheath also so this is myelin sheath okay this is myelin sheath okay and these are nodes of renvier where cha ion channels are exposed although ion channels are pre present over all the membrane but here they are exposed and again the same way you know outside positive inside negative inside negative outside positive so positive to negative they are moving from in the form of jumping impulses saltatory term literally means to jump to jump yes so in myelinated neurons or exons there is saltatory conduction means in the jumping form they are covering large distances and you know they are getting transmitted from one region to another okay now this is uh, one graph which i would like to uh, you know share with you so minus 70 millivolt we are showing voltage over here and uh, uh, approximately uh, this will be the peak 30 millivolt so it is showing it is going to show polarization which which part of graph which part of graph this one when it is in resting state at minus 70 millivolt as you people know here on um, x axis we are representing time and now depolarization is happening and depolarization means you people know na plus ions uh, influx would be there and that's how finally you know at approximately plus 30 millivolt an action potential would be generated this will be considered to be the peak of it and now again repolarization means k plus ions are going to move out means it is trying to come back to the 
resting state but ma'am what is this graph representing you know this graph which is going more down we haven't talked about talked about it don't worry i am telling you this hyperpolarization so you know keep the uh, gated channels are open remain open for a longer period of time as compared to n plus gated, uh, gated channels so sometimes the membrane is hyperpolarized extra polarized but again you know it has to come back to the resting state only and from now again from here you know the second impulse will, will start getting generated which will be again called as polarization depolarization repolarization so it keeps on happening so whatever we had uh, you know studied we have put it in in the in the form of a graph during the conduction of nerve impulse each successive section of neurons membrane will undergo and action potential consisting of depolarization followed by repolarization okay so yes uh, every conduction is getting happened with the help of neurotransmitters neurotransmitters are chemicals can you people see this is okay i have to choose another color just a second yes so can you people see this uh, this is one neuron okay and this is another neuron right so uh, this uh, first one let me num you know uh, give it numbering like this is two this is one so from this neuron uh, this is pre synaptic neuron some small chemicals they are getting they are coming out and these chemicals are called as uh, neurotransmitters like like if you want to give some example like ach yes we have examples also like ach acetylcholine ACH, acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin. So they can be inhibitory, they can be stimulatory also. So when they are getting released, so now they will be helping in generating nerve impulse in post synaptic neuron, means in the second neuron. Okay, and this way neurotransmitters help in the transmission of nerve impulses. In this diagram also, these triangular, these are these are uh, neurotransmitters only. Okay, and here on the second neuron in which the new nerve impulse has to be generated, uh, there are receptors present which receive those neurotransmitters. Okay, my dear children. So yes, uh, this was I guess all about you know uh, how a nerve impulse generates. Now many questions can be asked uh, from this portion as I I have already told you people. and neural control and coordination is a chapter from uh, physiology unit and if you people know, don't know let me tell you uh, that from this physiology unit approximately 13 to 14 questions they come uh, appear in the examination of neet so i hope you understand you know uh, this chapter is a part of that physiology and uh, it is also important for us yes compared to uh, compared to other ch chapters a little lesser but yes very important and in this chapter also the topic which we have covered today uh, uh, is considered to be one of the most important sub topics okay so how the nerve impulse get generated how they get transmitted we have talked about that this was me dr kavita devani joshi again your zoology uh, companion and teacher and let me tell you i'll be bringing one more topic next time uh, next session with same energy same enthusiasm and we will be talking about that in detail uh, and we will also be talking about the questions uh, you know what kind of questions appear in neat from that particular topic okay so till then you people please stay healthy stay at your homes and uh take care of yourselves and i'll be meeting you very soon with the next session next next topic and till then i would sign off the lecture okay this is the time to wrap up sign off the session and yes we will be meeting soon thank you everyone take care goodbye for more such videos please like share and subscribe to extra marks neat youtube channel